Okay, here we go. Welcome again. I'm half right. Almighty. What's my somebody say my name? Nah, this is your job. What's up? How y'all doing? <laughs> and here we go with the first video Lupe Fiasco Superstar. I think um Lupe is very talented. Is that right? Yes, I think um he admits that, you know. His style is a little different from the norm because he could have been doing what everybody is doing from Chicago. I do like this collab, but also this is something that's unexpected. This is definitely something unexpected. In the video, it makes people want to, it makes people see that all that good is not good. Just because your name is in life, it does not mean that that's the kind of life that you live off the stage. They gonna find out. Well, you know, unfortunately, people don't see the end of you know the work. But you know, when I first heard this song. Right? The first thing that caught me, first of all, I think that there's a difference between a hook and a chorus. Mm -hmm. You look at a chorus and you look at a hook. Now, all songs have choruses, but songs with hooks, that's what hooks you. And when I heard that chorus, I'm like, yo, this hook is like, that's what got me. So the hook brought me into the song. So then when I saw the video, I was like, okay. And I was really digging what he was doing. So yo, I give that one like a, um, I don't know. I give that one like a hundred out of a hundred, you know? I give respect for respect to right. And I, like I said, I do like his style. I do think he has a lot to say. I think that this is an, uh, an artist that continues to grow. Okay, with that, let's go to the next one. Wow. I gotta and go. this I, next I, I, video uh, is... I'm calling the record label. Uncle Luke and Two Live Crew. Well, you need to come get half time. Okay, now this is too, too much to me. Let me tell you, one thing that I, I have to say about Luke and Two Live Crew was that they were willing to push the envelope Look at that. and deal with matters of censorship. I thought you weren't going to deal with And video. put us in the forefront of saying I you that we are allowed with you. to speak and say and express ourselves in any wow. means and by any means. The children's content are meshed together. Here you knew this was adult content and they didn't show it. And Luke and Two Live Crew knew they had a particular place in hip hop. Other than that, I'm done. I can't deal. Well, you know what, though? This group was necessary. When you're trying to get into this, you're trying to find what's going to make them watch me. What's going to make them... Now, he knows he's not the most lyrical cat in the world. All three of them dudes know that they're not. So, what's... I, we need an eye catcher. So, they go around Miami. They go to them strip clubs. They get the biggest butt chicks that they can find. Boom. Now, you got an audience. You know, but I got a lot of respect for Luke. You yes, know, as, I do. As a businessman. You know, as being and... an entrepreneur. As a businessman, but also willing, for whatever reason, whether you agreed, you did not agree, or you thought it was a publicity stunt, for stepping to the forefront, dealing with the sistership issue, the First Amendment issue, when it came to music and expression of self. Well, on that note, let's move to the next song. That happens to be Warren G. First of all, your name should have been War G, not Warren. Warren is his name. I don't care. So call, yo, yo, yo. What, his what name Warren, Warren, and my name is Warren, and I'm nah, a G. Warren what, G. That's why it should have been War G, not Warren. Warren don't get ain't nobody. Ain't nobody scared of Warren. But they were liking his style because he brought the G Funk era into yeah. play. Now this was also on the soundtrack of Above the Rim, and as you already know, Warren G is the brother of Dr. Dre who was down with the group called 213 with Nate Dogg, the late Nate Dogg, Snoop Dogg, who is now Snoop Lion, and Warren G himself. And the three of them were childhood buddies that grew up into the, you know, grew up making music, you know, on the side while Dre was doing NWA. Warren G introduced Snoop Dogg to Dr. Dre. Snoop Dogg, we know what happened in the, his career and has he blew up. And Warren G kind of was on his own and did his little thing. And, you know, he blew up to the surprise of his brother because he said, I didn't even know my brother had to do it like that. And he was signed to Death Jam, and he completed that and created that and was a pioneer of that G-Funk era from L.A. All right, now, simply on the strength of this song mm -hmm. and that movie, I know that album went platinum. Okay, so there had to be a second album, unless she was on one of them record labels that, that you know, that. Well, you know, you know what Chuck you know, say. You know what Chuck say about Def Jam, and I'll leave it at that. But I'm just saying. I mean, you could sell a million albums, and then you don't get you don't get a second album because you, you didn't get no money off your first album. You didn't make nothing. I like this song. That's about as far as I go. I don't know another song this cat made. 
Make sure you hit us up on rapstation.com, on youtube.com, and leave some comments. Tell us what you think. Right. Tell us what you want to see. You know what I'm saying? So that we can collaborate together, right. figure out some solutions, and do that, right. that good thing. Yo, you know what I'm saying? Yo, my tour bus is here. I got to go. Yo, look, listen. Yo, this is Josh signing out. I'm going to see you next week. My, 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 uh, my tour bus is outside. I got to go now. The cab is blowing. Okay, see ya. <laughs>